Hello students, welcome to Eduit. In the last session, we have discussed about one property that was valency. We have discussed everything about valency in the last session. And now, in this session, we are going to discuss about another property that is atomic size. So, we are going to discuss about the size of the atoms. So, what is the first thought that comes to your mind when you heard the term atomic size? It means the size of the atom. So, like all the people in our surrounding has different size. We all have different size. We wear our clothes according to our size. Similarly, atoms also have different sizes. And in simple language, atomic size can be defined as the radius of an atom. So, it is the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost cell up to which electrons are present in an isolated atom. So, it is a distance. Simple language, it is the distance from the center to the outermost cell up to which electrons are present in an isolated atom. So, I have used one term that is isolated atom. What does I mean by this term isolated atoms? Isolated atoms mean the atom is single. It is not in combination with any other atom. Okay, it is in neutral form. So, there is no charge on that atom. So, in that situation, when the atom is single, that means it is isolated, there is no charge, that means it is neutral. In that case, this atomic size concept is applicable. But when the atom is in combination with other atoms, this atomic size changes. And for those situations, we have other terms like van der Waal radius, covalent radius, metallic radius, and ionic radius. These are the terms associated with those situations. But we are not going to deal with these terms right now. You will learn about these terms in higher classes. Now, just focus only on one thing that whenever the term atomic size comes, it means the size of an isolated atom. So, this is the definition of atomic size. Now, we are going to see how this atomic size changes throughout the modern periodic table because all the atoms have no similar size. They have different sizes and there is a pattern in which this size changes throughout the periodic table. But before understanding that pattern, we should also know one term that is effective nuclear charge. This term effective nuclear charge is related with atomic size because whenever the effective nuclear charge of the valence electron increases, then the atomic size decreases. And whenever the effective nuclear charge of the valence electrons decreases, then atomic size increases. So they are inversely proportional. So we should know what is effective nuclear charge first. So let's understand this term, what is effective nuclear charge. So it is a nuclear charge, it's, it comes from the nuclear charge. So what is nuclear charge? The charge provided by the nucleus. In an atom, the nucleus contains proton and neutron. And the charge of proton is positive. Neutrons have no charge, they are neutral. So since there are two kinds of particles, one has positive charge. So when we are considering the whole nucleus, then the whole nucleus will provide positive charge only because neutrons have no charge. But outside the nucleus, the electrons has negative charge. So effective nuclear charge is defined as the net positive charge felt by an electron in a multi-electron atom. So I said multi-electron atom, that means whenever the number of electron is more than one, that means except hydrogen, in case of all the other atoms, the effective charge or the net charge felt by an electron is called effective nuclear charge. So you might be thinking in an atom, there is only one nucleus and the charge provided by the nucleus is fixed. So all the electrons in that atom should feel the same, should feel the same amount of positive charge or the charge provided by the nucleus. But it is not the case. The case is different. All the electrons don't feel the same amount of heat. Now you might be getting a little bit confused. So let's understand this term or this effective nuclear charge with an analogy. Think about a day in winter season. That means it is a cold day. That means the surrounding is cold. So and now in this situation consider a bonfire. Bonfire. So around that bonfire some people are sitting in a circular fashion so that they can get some heat. So there are some people in a circular fashion. Now consider another set of people who are also sitting, but they are away from that first circle. So they are making the second circle around that bonfire. Now since the bonfire is one, only one bonfire is there, so the heat provided by the bonfire will be fixed. He, that bonfire cannot discriminate about the people. The amount of heat is same, that the heat generated from the bonfire is same. But will all the people around that bonfire will feel the same amount of heat no right they will not feel the same amount of heat 
द पीपल हुई आर क्लोज एट टू द बॉन्ड फायर दे विल फील मोर हीट एंड द पीपल हु आर अवे फ्रॉम द बॉन्ड फायर दे विल फील लेट लेसर अमाउंट ऑफ हीट सो हेयर द सिचुएशन इज दैट द स्टील दो द बॉन्ड फायर इज मेकिंग सेम अमाउंट ऑफ हीट बट द हीट फेल्ड बाय द पीपल इज डिफरेंट and the same situation is applicable in case of atoms also you can consider the nucleus of an atom as the bonfire so it is providing positive charge and the electrons at the as the peoples so the electrons will felt the amount of positive charge it depends on the distance the how how much the distance is between that electron and the nucleus larger the distance less amount of positive charge will be felt by that electron and that amount of positive charge felt by the electron is effective nuclear charge whenever we say the term nuclear charge it means the charge provided by the nucleus not the charge felt by the electron it is a charge provided by the nucleus but whenever the term effective nuclear charge comes it means the charge felt by the electrons so that this effective nuclear charge will be different for all the electrons okay and in case of size whenever we talk about the size the effective nuclear charge of the valence electron that means the outermost electrons is considered now we are going to see how this effective nuclear charge plays an important role in determining the size of an atom let's discuss how the atomic size changes throughout the period of a modern periodic table let's have the periodic table here so this is the modern periodic table in any of the period see the atomic number the atomic number is increasing throughout the period that means this atomic number it signifies the number of protons so the number of protons is increasing throughout a period if you are moving from the left hand side direction to the right hand side direction that means from group 1 to group 18 if you are moving then the atomic number is increasing so the number of proton is increasing since the atomic number is number of protons so the proton has a positive charge that means the nuclear charge is increasing in a period along with this the number of valence electron is also increasing in a period so valence electron increases and the nuclear charge increases in a period if you are moving from left hand left hand side direction to the right hand side direction now the basis of a period is number of shells in a period all the elements that are present in the period will have the same number of shells so for example if i talk about period 2 all the elements that are present in this period 2 they will have the same number of shells so all the electrons that are present in this in all these atoms they will be distributed in only two shells which is common for all of them so the distance of the valence electron will be same for all the elements that are present in a period so the distance is same and nuclear charge is increasing so what will happen to the outermost electron it will feel more and more nuclear charge as the nuclear charge is increasing that means if you are moving from left hand side direction to the right hand side direction the outermost electron that means the valence electron will feel more and more nuclear charge that means the effective nuclear charge will increase throughout the period this effective nuclear charge will be the predominant factor it will determine the size of the atom as the effective nuclear charge is increasing the outermost electron will be pulled more and more closer to the nucleus so as this happens the nuclear charge effective nuclear charge is increasing the atomic size will decrease this is the trend of atomic size in a period in a period the atomic size decreases from left to right this happens just because of the effective nuclear charge is also increasing let's have some of the atom from period 2 so these are the atoms so these are very beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen let's have their atomic size see the numbers the numbers are decreasing from one element to the next element the numbers are decreasing and this is common for all so the atomic size in a period is decreasing and this is the trend okay so that's all about period now let's understand what happens in a group so in a vertically vertically what happens so in a group the basis is valence electron the number of valence electron is same but in a group when we move from top side to the bottom side then on moving from one element to the next element the number of shell increases by 1 so the number of shell is increasing that means the distance of the valence electron the outermost electron will be increasing throughout a group now the case is different previously in a period the distance from the valence electron to the nucleus that was same throughout a period but in a group 
the distance of the valence electron from the nucleus is increasing throughout a group. So this will affect the effective nuclear charge. The charge felt by the outermost electron will be lesser and lesser in a group. So the as the effective nuclear charge is decreasing and the increase there is an increase in distance. So this increase in distance will play the more predominant role and it will determine the atomic size. So the atomic size will increase throughout a group. So in a group, if you are moving from top side to the bottom side, then the size of the atoms will increase. Let's have some of the atoms from group one. So in group one, the atoms are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. So these are the atoms from group one. Let's have their atomic size. See the atomic size. The number is increasing from top to the bottom. So there is an increase in size and this increase is due to the increase or the increase in distance. You can say the or increase in the distance of the outermost electron to the nucleus throughout a group. So this is the trend of atomic size in a group. That's all in this session. In this session, we have discussed everything about atomic size. This concept of atomic size is very useful. You can apply this concept everywhere in chemistry. In the next session, we'll discuss another property. That property is metallic and non-metallic nature. How this property, metallic and non-metallic nature, changes throughout the modern periodic table that we'll discuss in the next session.